As Sister Jamila lights her candle, she whispers a prayer passed down to her through over 40 generations of her family. The rising smoke carries her prayer high into the heavens. She is a member of the original Christian church, started almost 2,000 years ago. But what happened to this original church, and where do we find it? At that time, those believers in Jesus Christ joined together with the apostles, establishing the first organized church community in the city of Antioch. It is there in Antioch that they were first called Christians, as stated in Acts 11.25. Scholars estimate there are over 2,600 groups today who lay claim to being the church, or at least the direct descendant of the church described in the New Testament. As Christianity has inarguably played a considerable role in our history, it is important to understand the factors which have led to its current divided state. With the birth of the Church of Jesus Christ at Pentecost, the apostles made many missionary journeys. Over time, five patriarchates were established in Antioch, Jerusalem, Rome, Alexandria, and Constantinople. The Apostle Peter was the first bishop of Antioch. Twelve years later, he became the first bishop of Rome, leaving the Apostle Paul as the head of the Antiochian church, while James, the brother of Jesus, was the first bishop of Jerusalem. Even though they were in full communion with one another, disputes arose over the adherence to the Old Testament law. James gave the solution to settle all doctrinal and moral issues through ecumenical councils, and the church flourished for 1,054 years. The first council was known as the Council of Jerusalem, as documented in Acts 15. In the history of the Christian Church, we find scores of such councils, establishing its canon laws, which the Orthodox regard as the faith of the Apostles, faith of the Fathers, faith of the Orthodox, the faith which has established the universe. Heresies, disputes, numerous wars, and much persecution constantly challenged the early Fathers of Orthodox Christians. But because the church was unified, it continued to survive. At the Ecumenical Council in 325 at Nicaea, the bishops decided they needed a creed. After much prayer and some 90 years, what's known today as the Nicaean Creed was finally written. Between the years 325 and 787, seven meetings were held to establish the laws of the church. These became known as the seven ecumenical councils. The faith of the church at the close of its first thousand years was the same. The doctrine, the creed, the government were all recognized as one everywhere. This one church was the Orthodox Church, which has weathered many attacks. This cohesion, however, was soon to end. As the first millennium was drawing to a close, tensions began to mount between the Western Church, Rome, and the four Eastern Churches. The bishops of Rome began to claim authority over the other four churches, on the claim that the Roman Patriarch was the only true successor of Peter, 
two giant issues emerged. First, Rome's declaration of the Pope's supremacy, and second, that the wording of the 700-year-old creed be changed. As disunity led to conflict, a cardinal was sent by the Roman bishop to slap a document on the altar of the church in Constantinople during a Sunday worship, excommunicating the Patriarch of Constantinople from the church. The final consequences of these tragic events was a massive split. The Great Schism occurred in the year 1054. Pursuing his claim of the universal headship of the church, the Patriarch of Rome broke from the other four churches, creating the Roman Catholic Church, independent of the other. Meanwhile, the four Eastern or Orthodox Patriarchs continued to carry on. In 1517, a little-known German monk named Martin Luther, protesting certain Roman Catholic practices, nailed a 95-point thesis to the door of the Roman Church in Wittenberg. His critique started what is now known as the Protestant Reformation. Fueled by complex political, social, and economic factors, in addition to religious problems, the Reformation spread like a raging fire into virtually every nook and cranny of the Roman Catholic Church. As decade followed decade, many branches of Protestantism took various forms. Different divisions insisted they were neither Protestant nor Catholic, most wanting a less centralized form of leadership. Anyone could start their own church, which led to today's 2,600 different Protestant denominations. While many profess to being Christians, they reject the biblical data which speak of the historic church, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Some pretended to be the New Testament church, but were seriously off base, leading many people far astray from Christ and the church. But that first church of the apostles, despite persecution, political oppression, and desertion, miraculously carried on. Today, the four patriarchates remain intact, in full communion, maintaining the original apostolic faith of the New Testament record. The holiest two Christian shrines, the Nativity, where Jesus was born, and the Sepulchre, where Jesus was buried and resurrected, are still protected to this day by the Orthodox Church. As the 165th direct successor to the Apostle Peter, the Patriarch of Antioch, Ignatius IV, presides on a street called Strait, as is mentioned in the Bible. Patriarch Ignatius IV took his name after the great martyr Ignatius I, who was the third to preside on the throne of Antioch from 67 to 107 AD. Records of Orthodox tradition hold that Ignatius of Antioch was the young child Christ took up into his arms in Matthew 18.3. We did not invent orthodoxy. Churches cannot be invented. Uh, and, and nobody can make a church. And Christ is the only one who spoke about his own church. And we believe that we stick to orthodoxy because it is his own church.
Dumnezeul meu, 